Does civil disobedience really get you excited? Go to freestateproject.org, get signed up, move to New Hampshire, get involved with the next wave of liberty activism, and be the next Rosa Parks. The Free State Project is your best chance for liberty in your lifetime. freestateproject.org. This is the Lou Rockwell Show. Well, it's so great to have with us this morning Mr. Peter Schiff, Peter, the author of The Little Book of Bull Moves and Bear Markets, the president of Euro Pacific Capital, and the great voice of sanity and economic reason on television, on radio. Uh, so often on these shows, the only, the only person saying anything intelligible and intelligent. Uh, so, Peter, it's great to have you with us. And tell us what, what, what you think is going on in the stock market. Do you think that this temporary, is this a temporary bounce? Is it, have they really created uh, a new bull market? What's happening? I don't think so. I mean, the bear market's been going on since 2000, but there are obviously always bull moves within uh, long-term bear markets. Uh, the one that we're in right now, obviously, if you'd have bought the low, of this, you know, this decline. I mean, you've got good gains. I mean, the U.S. maybe 20 percent, but some of the foreign markets are up 30, 40 percent. Some of the stocks have tripled and quadrupled from where they were in October, November last year. So there's certainly opportunities to trade on the long side in bear markets. But I still think the U.S. bear market is ongoing. I think the damage to our economy is is going to continue. Uh, it's going to get worse, and I think it's going to continue to undermine corporate earnings. Ultimately, interest rates are going to rise, and so that's going to diminish the present value of a lower earnings stream. I think a lot of U.S. companies are going to go bankruptcy in the in this coming depression, and so it's not a good environment for stocks. I mean, the only hope stocks have, and I put that in uh, in quotes, is that inflation is so bad they they succeed in creating so much inflation that we have a not we we know. Nominally, the stock market starts to rise, but in real terms, adjusted for inflation or priced in gold, uh, stocks will continue to lose value, much the way they did throughout the entire decade of the 1970s, only I think worse. Peter, I guess they've increased the money supply by the greatest amount in the history of the world, so far as I can tell. When are we going to start to see the effect of that in uh, everyday life? Oh, I think we've already seen the effect of it. I mean, you know, imagine how, how much prices would have fallen. Uh, how had the government not done that? I mean, real estate prices would be quite a bit lower. I think even consumer good prices would be a lot lower than they are right now. The fact is the government has prevented uh, a necessary downward adjustment in prices because of all the inflation they've created. Now, at some point, it's not going to simply be that inflation is preventing prices from falling. It will be causing prices to rise, and they will rise dramatically. But, of course, by the time that happens, you know, it's too late. I mean, it's very you know, wishful thinking on the part of Bernanke to think that, well, when prices start to go up, I'll quickly you know, remove all the excess liquidity. Well, do you think he's just lying, or does he actually think that? Does he actually think that the Fed is going to do that? I don't know. It's more likely that he's lying because, you know, he did get a 1590 on his SAT. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I figure he's a pretty bright guy. He went to Harvard, right? But, so, I mean, he can't, be, he can't be stupid. Is this going to be a worldwide depression? I mean, what's going to happen in, in the European markets and to, and to the euro and the yen? And what do you think's ahead? Well, it depends on what they do. You know, I, I don't think other countries um, have as much of a reason to be as irresponsible, because our economy is the most highly leveraged, the most dependent on consumer spending and borrowing and asset prices than any of the other major economies in the world. In fact, the other countries, you know, European Union, Japan, these are creditor nations. So they're still owed more than they've borrowed. You know, they're in the opposite position of the United States. So they have more reason uh, to fear the inflation and to want to be responsible. Whereas uh, I, our politicians, I think they're putting all their hope on inflation. I mean, inflation is what everybody thinks is going to save the day. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. How would the transition to a free society happen? Libertarian media? Lawsuits against the state? How about libertarians elected in increasing numbers even to the state legislature? All of these things have already happened in New Hampshire. Find out more at freestateproject.org. Peter, what's going to happen to the price of gold? Well, yeah, no, it's going to go up. I mean, the only question is how high. Uh, and, you know, it, it all depends on how much they debase the dollar. You know, I mean, you know. How much has the price of gold risen uh, in Zimbabwe dollars? I mean, I don't even, I don't even know if there's a percentage, if, if you can have enough zeros to figure it out. So, you know, it, it, it all depends. You know, there's, you know in, inherently, there's no difference between the, our money, the U.S. dollar, and the Zimbabwe dollar. There's no intrinsic value. They're simply pieces of paper. Uh, what gives it value is confidence. 
and obviously, you know, people have more confidence in the U.S. economy than they do in the Zimbabwe economy. But, you know, 10, 20 years ago, people had a lot of confidence, obviously, in Zimbabwe. The currency had much more value than it does today. And confidence, you know, can, can, can go. And just because people are confident in the dollar today, we don't know what if they'll be confident tomorrow. Certainly a lot of people are losing confidence in the dollar, and more people will lose confidence. And eventually no one's going to want the currency, and it will collapse. And, you know, it doesn't matter uh, how big the country is. Look, Germany was an industrial uh, country. It was uh, you know, a wealthy country. Uh, and and we'll look what happened to the Reichsmark. I mean, it, it's not just you know, third-world banana republics that have to worry about the inflation if they print too much money. Peter, you took some economics at Berkeley. What got you interested in Austrian economics? Well, I didn't really study it at Berkeley. I took a couple of classes. I was a finance major in accounting, and I took, like, Econ 1 and Econ 2. And, I, and basically what I really found at Berkeley is, you know, when you study microeconomics, I found that to be a valuable course. I thought there's a lot of interesting um, things that go on in micro. But macro, which is basically, you know, the Keynesian, you know, nonsense, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was it, I didn't learn, it was just you know, um, a waste of time. I mean, I understood how crazy it was, and I guess I got a kick out of arguing with my professors. But that's where the kids really get brainwashed. You know, it's all macroeconomics. It's not, it's all nonsense. It's all, it's all politics. It's all, you know, government propaganda on how the free market really doesn't work, and it needs government. Government needs to create demand. A government needs to stimulate economies. Governments need to fight unemployment. I mean, all the things that governments can do uh, to help the economy, when the reality is all they do is hurt the economy. And, they, you know, they, the governments can't create. All they do is destroy. Peter, let's say we wave the magic Misesian wand, and Obama and Geithner and Bernanke and all the rest of the gang invite you to Washington, and they say, Peter, what do we do? You know, I'm meeting with somebody next week from the office of um, OMB, I think, from the Obama administration. Call me up. He's coming to my office in uh, New York. So hey. maybe I'll have an opportunity to, to give them some advice. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there is, the thing is there's no quick fixes. Everybody thinks that, you know, w w what's the plan? You know, what's the government program that can get us out of this mess? You know, what, what can we do? The, the real answer is nothing. You know, we borrowed and spent ourselves uh, into this position, and there is no easy way out of it. Certainly, uh, borrowing and spending more is not the answer. You know, if, if we got into this gigantic hole by borrowing and spending money, in order to get out of the hole, we need to do the opposite. We need to, we, we, you know, we need to fill the dirt back in. So we need to save money. We need to consume less and produce more. We need to export more and import less. And all that is going to require some short-term pain as the economy readjusts. But, you know, uh, th there is no way to avoid it. But what the government wants to do is the government is trying to find a way to postpone it because there's always an election coming up. But that, you know, that's look, look at the, all the all the pain that we're suffering because they stimulated the economy in 2001 and 2002. Wouldn't we have been better off had we had a more severe recession in 2001? Had we not had record car sales and record home sales? Uh, because all those home sales and car sales were paid for with borrowed money, uh, and now all the lending institutions that underwrote those loans are broke. We would have been better off had we not gone on that spending binge and taken a more severe recession uh, back then. So, I mean, all I would have to tell them is, look, we've got to allow the economy to work. You've got to level with the American public. You've got to deliver the bad news. You've got to let them know that, look, you know, we, we, we had a trillion, multi-trillion dollar spending orgy, and now we're broke, and now we've got to, uh, you know, atone for that. We've got to repair our balance sheet. Uh, you know, we've got to be responsible. And, yeah, it's not as fun as, you know, blowing all your money and just, you know, you know having a good time, but these are the consequences. There's always consequences, right? If, you, if you're gluttonous and you eat a lot of food and it, you enjoy that, uh, the result is that you're fat, you know. And if you don't want to be fat and you've got to change your, your diet, uh, well, you know, maybe it's not as fun eating salad, but that's something that you have to do to make up for the fact that you pigged out for so long. Peter Schiff, thanks so much for telling the truth on television and radio and coming on this podcast. Great to have you with us. Sure. Well, someone's got to get out there and tell the truth. <laughs> Thank you, Peter Schiff. You've been listening to The Lou Rockwell Show, produced by LouRockwell.com, the best-read libertarian website in the world. Thanks for listening.